What's going on, everybody? Good afternoon, and we've got one drafted rookie left. And this one, I'm going to be straight honest. I, I don't, I don't have a lot. I, I don't have a lot to work with here. Michael Jarrell is a player that we're just going to kind of have to let it ride with. There's just not going to be very much for us to uh, work with. By the way, I'm sure you've noticed, but I am still in. Uh, floating head mode here, which I guess is appropriate because I don't have as much information as I usually would. In fact, I have so little to work with here that I think we're just going to cram it all into one video. I think I'm going to make one video on Michael Jarrell and we're going to call it good. Um, he does, he has a page on PFF now, but there's no data on it. There's like literally nothing on it except for his measurements, which I can get from a bunch of other sites too. So straight up, there's not a lot for us to go on here. I'm going to give what I have, but this is a tough one because when you draft a player from Finley, you, um, you're you going to get somebody that is hard to know very much about. The Findley, I think they're the Oilers. And uh, Gerald, I, I can understand the intrigue, I can understand the excitement, but straight up, we're just going to have to wait and see on this one. So Gerald played right tackle at um, Findlay. I don't know if we're going to play him at right tackle. Maybe he moves to left. I don't think he's going to play inside. I think he is a tackle one way or the other. He's going to be 25 when the season starts. I think he turns 25 in August. So yeah, he's older than the typical rookie. His measurements are NFL caliber. I can say that. He's 6'4", which is short for a tackle, but that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad idea to be short when you're playing on the line and you need to get leverage on guys all the time. So I don't think that's a bad thing. Eighth percentile weight is a little bit less than average. However, remember that is compared to tackles historically and tackles tend to be more athletic in the modern day. I feel like, so I don't think having a 309 pound uh, tackle is necessarily a bad thing. In fact, I think that's roughly in line with what you might want, especially in an offense like this. So 309 pounds I think is fine. And his pro day, because he did not have a combine, his pro day was stellar. A 49440 is extraordinary. 95th percentile. 32 and a half inch vert for a tackle is 90th percentile. So he's very explosive on top of being fast. And his bench press was pretty good too. 26 is a little above average. So in terms of the numbers, in terms of the attributes, yeah, he's got some good stuff going here, doesn't he? Now, that's all well and good. It is a pro day. I want to remind people of that a pro day, the numbers get fudged. The numbers can be a little bit slanted in favor of the player because they are looking out for the player's best interests. But he, he can move. He can move. So we got that going for us. Uh, so I don't really have any numbers because P uh, PFF literally doesn't have them and you're not going to find them anywhere else. Like, you're not really going to find much. Uh, the best I could do, there's this one page I found that had like, oh, in, in 2023, the Findlay offensive line allowed this many sacks and it allowed, it, it, it cleared the way for X number of rushing yards per game, but that, that doesn't really do much for us now, does it? So... What I can say is that he played eight games, didn't start any of the games, but played in eight games in 2018 for Finley, and then he missed all of 2019 and 2020. Now, he missed 2020 because of COVID. Could not find why he missed all the games in 2019, but he did. Uh, they, uh, the spring 2021 season, remember back in 2021 to make up for the COVID year, they had a uh, truncated spring season. Um, Finley played him at right tackle for all, I think it was right tackle anyway, for all six games, six starts, and he made first team all GMAC. Uh, GMAC, what, what is that? The grand, uh, the grandmother associated conference. I don't know. I don't know what it stands for, but he was considered to be one of the best players in the GMAC conference that year. Division two football can be a little bit of a trip sometimes. In fall, so a couple months later, he started all 12 games that Finley played in and made third team all GMAC. So again, considered to be one of the best at his position in the entire um, GMAC, whatever that is. Uh, it's Division II football, I know that much. 
And then over the last two years, he's made 11 starts, all 11 games, by the way, because I, I don't know exactly how it works, but I guess for uh, Finley, they only play 11 games a season typically. Both years he made first team all GMAC. In 2022, he made second team all American for Division II, to be clear. Of course, he didn't make all American for the um uh, compared to all college players that would be absurd um and in 2023 he was honorable mention all american and in 2023 he also added first team all super region 1 and he was named the GMAC offensive line of the year lineman of the year i guess would be more accurate to put it so he was decorated and it is worth noting that he seems to have had the opportunity to transfer to a bigger school in the last year or two, but he chose not to because he wanted to do right by Finley because they were the only team that initially recruited him. So, you know, good for him, not so good for us who are now trying to find ways to talk about him that um, are in interesting and informative. But, hey, he won a lot of awards. He got named to a lot of uh, first teams and third teams and second teams. I mean, he did the best that he could, I guess. So some of the pros that I have on him, we're just going to go ahead and jump right to the pros because those are all the numbers I have. He made 40 straight starts to end his college career, 48 total games played. So he was very durable. He stayed out there and he never did anything to have to miss a game, which is, I mean, hey, most of the guys we drafted this year were durable in college. I can say that. <coughs> um, I guess uh, D. Eskridge may have done a number on this front office and we just don't want to mess around with that stuff anymore. Um, his short height will help him in the leverage battle. And I know there are weaknesses to being short as well. I do get that. But I think that overall, it's better to be short. I'd rather be too short than too tall because of the leverage game. I, I think that is such an asset to a tackle or any offensive lineman or any lineman, period, more than it is a detriment. Has an NFL body and frame for tackle work despite small school origins. Like... A lot of players who have passed through the Finley program who play tackle are probably, you probably got some guys going through there who are more like 270 pounds, 280 pounds, if I had to guess, because those are the kinds of guys that they can get because they're such a small school. Not this guy. This guy actually looks like an NFL player. This guy is not radically smaller or of lesser frame than Charles Cross. So he can do it. He should be able to do it. He just, we we just didn't get to see him do it against the best of the best. He's a phenomenal athlete for his size with historically good movement abilities. Really can't be undersold how special it is to run a sub 49540. Sub 49540. You very rarely see that from a tackle. And it's not like he's doing it at 280 pounds. He's almost 210 pounds he weighed in at, and he's still doing it. Not just fast in a straight line, but explosive and boasting lower body bend. So he's an all-around really good athlete, and I could see him panning out at the NFL level because of that. Like, there are some attributes that really good offensive linemen in the NFL right now wish they had. There are tackles out there who are very good, who wish they could move like this guy. They wish they had explosiveness like this guy. Um, lateral movement skills to mirror pass rushers when they go outside. He's got the ability to uh, shuffle his feet. He's got the ability to mirror. He looks pretty decent doing that. Again, facing very, very weak competition. But he's got legitimate lateral movement skills. So I got to give him that. It's not just an immobile thing at all. Um, Non-zero chance that NFL coaching can, can get him maximized quickly. Like... He's never had to deal with competition on the level of what he's going to deal with in the NFL, admittedly, but he has also never had coaching like this. And there's a chance that he could just suddenly shoot off through the roof once he gets in touch with some NFL coaches. Like he could just take off and within a year he's ready to go. That's on the table. He's quick off the snap. He launches into his sets quickly, doesn't allow the defensive uh, end to get a head start on him. Really good at making sure he <clears throat> gets off the ball fast and is ready to go. And has shown some ability to play in space on counters and also climb up to the second level. So it's not just on paper he can move well. No, he can move well on a football field in the way that an offensive lineman needs to. Now, the issues are very clear with him. Very hard to imagine him handling the jump in opposing talent well at first. 
So if you're thinking about playing this guy as a rookie, you're 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 gonna have a very bad time in all likelihood. So definitely plan to give him a year or two on the bench if you're planning on doing anything with him at all. His technique is all over the place, pretty much across the board, and coaching will have to rebuild him. There are a lot of reps where it just seems like he depend leans heavily on his physical talent to overcome the fact that he didn't necessarily do what he was supposed to do. And he's going up against guys where he can get away with that, but that's not going to last. Pass protection suffers from a lack of cohesion in his hands and feet. Doesn't play with a strong understanding of angles quite yet, just that cerebral part of the game that he's going to need to unlock in the NFL because in college he didn't need to because he was so much more athletic than everybody he went up against. Often loses balance by leaning into contact and puts himself in bad spots. Has work to do in master in hand position when engaged with linemen. And leg drive when trying to move defenders out of the hole is lacking. That's what the people have to say. That's some of the stuff that I saw. Straight up, a lot of this stuff is secondhand. I'm going to just admit that right now because there's really only one video that I have seen on the internet that offers any insight into this guy. There is one video and it's a highlight reel. So we're going to take a look at some of the things I wrote down when I watched his highlight reel. It's like less than six minutes. It's on YouTube. Anybody can just search Michael Gerald highlights and it comes up, but it's a highlight reel. It's designed to make him look as good as possible. So you're not going to see a lot of this stuff that we're talking about here. So I, I'm going to go ahead and admit it. a lot of this stuff is secondhand. However, I did watch the highlight reel. Let's go through it because it's all we got. This is literally all we have. So it's either this or I just don't do anything. And we just sit here and talk about something else for a few minutes. So I watched his YouTube highlight reel and let's talk about it. A lot of the reps on the highlight reel show him getting his man down to the ground. Um, there's a real tenacity with him in these clips. And some of it's probably because he's like a very big fish in a small pond because these guys are just not physically on his level. So there are lots of reps on that uh, on that highlight reel where he just gets his guy down to the ground and he it's impressive looking. I don't know what it means for us, but it looks good on tape. It does indicate a little bit of a mean streak and a little bit of a drive to keep going till the whistle blows. Uh early in the tape, he hit a combo block on an interior lineman to open up a hole for a run play. So nice to see he's got a little bit of timing there. Seems like the arm length shows up pretty good on the reps, keeping defenders back when he's in his pass sets. Um, is able to generate some movement on a run block by kind of using the defender's momentum against him, just kind of pushing him completely out of the play. Significant physical advantages over everyone he's against, which, I mean, you would expect that, you would hope. He he. There are some plays where he leans heavily on those advantages to overcome his lack of technique. There was like one play that stood out to me where the edge rusher looked like he was going to get to his outside corner and be able to uh, get around, bend around him. And then he just basically threw him, excuse me, threw him down to the ground because he's just a little too strong and he's able to just wrestle the guy down and it's done. It's over. And you're not going to be able to do that in the NFL. So that's where I say the technique needs to catch up. Uh, there was one rep midway through the video where he looked a little awkward in space, but he did hit a second level block on a linebacker. And as the clip went on, it felt like there were more and more of those plays where he would climb up to the second level and lay blocks. Um, there were a couple of plays where he hit multiple defenders on the same snap in like a chain where he goes, Duh, and then he goes up to the next guy. Uh, pretty good stuff. Can see the prime athletic ability show up on a few reps, but for the most part, Finley seemed to run a fairly basic offense, so you didn't get to see a ton of it. Uh, there was a seal block, which I was really happy to see going from right to left to open a hole. I don't think he took a great angle on the defender, but he did open up the hole. Doesn't land as powerful or decisive a hit to eliminate the defender as you would like, but it worked. And um, he did get away with a couple of holdings to my eye on that clip, uh, clip reel. But um, overall, there's some, you can see what the excitement's about when you look at this highlight reel. But at the same time, um, he's got a long way to go. He's got a long way to go. And... Um, it, it's up to the coaching staff now, but the promise is there and it is certainly possible for a really good offensive lineman to come out of nowhere like this. We drafted this guy <clears throat> about as high as we drafted Stone Forsyth a few years ago, right? And Forsyth has proven that he's been good in the NFL. Uh, Jason Kelsey got drafted around here, so it happens. 
but um, the odds of it happening cannot possibly be that high. All right, I'm going to get out of here. See you guys later. Go Hawks. That's all I got on Gerald. That's really all I got because that's all the universe has given me. See you guys later. Go Hawks.